Yeah, it's the appreciator, Brett, a.k.a. PQ. And uh, we did yesterday the Overnight Scape Central on the Beatles Rarities album. And it was just me and Frank. Uh, I think we've kind of worn out our other hosts who are waiting for us to get off of this topic. The Overnight Scape Central has been going on for over 10 years, just about every week regularly with a different topic and anybody uh, usually over nightscape underground hosts uh, participate and it's a tricky business getting new people to participate because most people don't want to talk and if they were going to make a podcast or appear on one they'd make a podcast and appear on one and and i understand that a lot of people are mic shy uh, how many people listen to talk radio and not only have never, but would never subject themselves to phoning in and being on the show? And, well, it's nerves. It's uh, you know, like stage fright, I suppose. Most people would never get on a stage with whatever cajoling. And then, of course, there's us people who, if it's karaoke night, we're up there making a total fool out of ourselves. But... We're, uh, our hosts, I think, have gotten tired of the Beatles. So uh, we're, we're, I think uh, there's going to be three more weeks of Beatle albums. We might do a week of solo Beatle people, you know, Ringo's albums, John, Paul, George. And, and I'm realizing now, I mean, just because I'm an old guy and I know who who the Beatles are or were, not a lot of people know more than the superficial, yeah, they listen to the radio and they know these songs might be the Beatles or might not. And uh, I'm just chock-a-block with all this meaningless trivia. And I don't know. It has no significance in the real world. Um I promise we would hear uh, a little taste of one of the hosts on the Overnight Scape Underground, Chad Bowers, the uh, master of the incredible true facts of space. Uh, shortly, we're going to hand the microphone over to him so he can uh, tell us horoscopes. I, I really like this bit. In fact, before we go on, let's just do that right now and listen together. Ariella. You are feeling tired. Your emotional spare tire is out of air. Avoid fire for the next week. Drink plenty of water until you've witnessed a new moon coming and going. Paint pictures of people without faces or form. Tourist. It looks like time to date. Don't waste time. Saturn's orbiting faster than normal. Other punters are lining up for Mary in the accounting department. We suggest a spaghetti dinner. For heaven's sake, don't skimp on the wine. Play it right and Mary will be preggers within a month. Elevators are strictly verboten. Only stairs for you. There's a 50% chance of death if you continue to eat sushi from the gas station. Germany. Time to take a ride on the Reading Railroad. If you don't already own the Reading Railroad, you may purchase it at this time. Microwave meals will take 30% longer to cook properly. This is until Pluto clears the shadow of Mars. Have you considered a new deodorant? Might be time. Concern. It, 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 it. It's time to refill your meds. Carousel takes place on the 23rd for all people marked with the concern sign. If you are not medicated, you will not enjoy the program. Be aware of mason jars during the cold long nights. Avoid all lawn equipment. Don't even think about it. Leonardo. It is your turn at the meat market. You may select one meat dish of up to three pounds in weight. For dinner this Wednesday, you should have pizza, mushroom pizza, with Asiago cheese. Red lights don't apply for you for the rest of the month, and stop signs are optional. Virginia. 
Watch out for savages when driving on the highway. Lottery tickets purchased at truck stops carry four times normal luck. This is not the time for a diet. Wait until later. Eat more for now and wash your face thoroughly with cold cream before bed. Pay a bomb $20 and you will receive a great reward. Library. It's time, it's time to write, to write, write the novel you've always, always been dreaming, been dreaming about. about. The main character is in your pants. Cuff your pants and wear a decorative belt. You will achieve the high score on a mega race this Thursday. You will fail to make progress at Tron because the translucent joystick has been damaged by the moon. Scorpions. Everyone likes ice cream, but not you. You have a dangerous bite that can cause infection. You need to visit a tailor. Your pants are blooming around your pincer. Listen to Abba while taking a bath. You are never too old to play with felt. Sega Darius. You are determined to make others laugh. Wednesday it could happen. Claris is in Randall's pocket until later in the month. Check your sweaters, make sure they don't smell of mothballs. A dead relative is trying to contact you. Keep your eyes open. Capicola. It's all cold cuts this week. Shave with caution and retain urine in upcycled milk jugs under your bed. Receive important dream updates and messages of future love. A dark man will give you honey from bees. Aquarium. That girl at the diner is not going to wake up in your bed without some effort. You need a new outfit for the coming season. Have you considered a dapper hat? Charm her with your wit and alcohol. She is not what she seems. She prefers plaid shirts and thin arms. Pieces. Arson may be required to get you the help you need. Hearth and home mean coffee and soup at reasonable temperature. Don't guess as you will burn people's tongues. Invest in a food thermometer today. You should play games of chance with complete strangers. And again, I can't urge you enough to just uh, be brave and go over to either archive.org and uh, search the Overnight Scape Underground and you'll get a selection, both by host and uh, by month. Uh, and, and you would just search, you know, uh, Overnight Scape Underground Shed. I bet you, and you would find a wonderful selection of his older Chad casts. He hasn't done one recently, but those are just marvelous constructions in audio with this absurd humor. And uh, I, the Vic and Sage stuff, I haven't listened in a while. And these new, higher quality recordings like uh, we had in our last program are just so good. Uh, I may make that as much as my original intention of this show is to do monologues. I think tossing that in now and then on the appreciator is not only a wonderful thing, but uh, an opportunity to bring to people who uh, who are hearers of much less old-time radio. I think by the time I was uh, old enough to appreciate it, I only came to appreciate old-time radio because, and it wasn't because older people around me said, oh, uh, Brett, you know, we used to, before TV, we used to listen to the radio because before, like, 1950, most people didn't have a TV. And the whole family would kind of sit around and listen to the radio, and they would play shows that people would listen to together as a family and or alone. And no, the radio probably wasn't in your car. I mean, these are all innovations that we all take for granted and how I uh, became aware, I was a TV nut and kind of knew all the shows. And there used to be an ad for the golden age 
of Radio, which was a, a Longines Symphonette record set that they advertised relentlessly on TV. And uh, it, the, the big catch of it all was the original Orson Welles War of the Worlds broadcast was on one record. And then it came with another record with just selections from all of these programs and all of these people who I basically had never heard of. I mean, I'd heard of Jack Benny, who was probably the biggest comedian in old time radio. Maybe you've heard of him, maybe not. Um, the younger you are, the least likely. But uh, I was familiar with his TV show, which ran through the early part of my childhood. I think I used to watch it with my great grandpa. Joe, the reruns in the afternoons. I have some vague memory of that. But I heard all these radio shows, and then I got into magazines like Good Old Days, which would talk about it. And in the back of the Good Old Days magazines, uh, I found in my teens that there were ads for tapes of these old time radio programs. And I started sending away for them and finding that ones with scary stories like lights out and suspense. And there's one called quiet, please. That's probably the best of them all. And, and the fun thing about a spooky story in radio is that your imagination fills the place of what you would see and makes these special effects. And, you know, back in the day, special effects were even wonkier and non-existent than they are today. But you could listen to this story and picture it in your mind. And, and it could be pretty scary to turn out the light. That was a whole uh, shtick behind the Lights Out program. Turn your lights out. And uh, there was a Bill Cosby bit that he did back be long before he was canceled, before he had TV shows. He was a stand-up comedian, and one of his stand-up bits was him uh, remembering a Lights Out uh, episode about a chicken heart that took over the... Can you imagine a monster chicken heart? But it was simpler times. And, well, the Vic and Sade is... Even people who remember old-time radio. Uh, I just accidentally, on a compilation cassette, I heard one, and I didn't get it. And then I met a guy by the name of Jeff Cohn, who insisted this was the funniest and the best old-time radio show that there ever was. And I started ordering, and we started exchanging tapes. And, of course, now uh, the old-time radio researchers are on archive.org and it just if you if this audio stuff really sounds interesting it's free it's there you can listen to it right on the site or you can download it and the the Vic and Sage stuff as you heard is just so unique it was written by a guy named Paul Reimer who had this I don't think he did any other radio programs that survive anyways or that are talked about, but he did this show and wrote it every day pretty much for about, what, 15 years? And it was very popular in the early to, like, yeah, the 30s, more so than any other time, although the early 40s, it was also pretty big. And then... Like everything else, I mean, do you remember the TV shows, most of them that you used to watch? Um, I'm just one of these strange appreciators of some of the most obscure things, in, in, as you've heard, in music, in television, in films. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it, now that I've driveled a lot about it, uh, we are going to eventually hear more Vic and Sade uh, on this show um, it, it could happen today, really. There, there is enough time. Uh, in fact, you know what? I, I, I'm, I, I'm. It's my show. I can do this. And let's let's throw a later episode of Vic and Sade. Uh, the last one was from 1940. Let's go up, uh, say 1942. Well, sir, the evening meal has been over only a little while as we approach the small house halfway up on the next block now. And here on the front porch, we find Mr. Victor Gook all by himself. 
Vic is swinging gently in the swing and leafing languidly through the newspaper. And at this moment, the screen door opens. Listen. Oh, out here, are you? You hit the nail right on the head, Dr. Sleech. I'm out here. Oh, I didn't know what you'd skipped over to me, Suffers. Nope. Say, it's getting cooler. Yeah. There's a kind of halfway smell of rain in the air. Paper state's rain for tonight. All right, then, move over. Oh, I'm always moving over. Seems like I spend half my time moving over. Fella gets sick and tired of it. <laughs> Why'd we ever buy such a skimpy, rotten little porch swing in the first place? Only two people can sit comfortable in it. We might have at least remembered there's three in the family. Where's the rest of the family, by the way? The rest of the family pulled off a swindle, I think. Oh? Mm-hmm. He and I were doing the dishes, me washing, him wiping. Bluetooth Johnson come up on the back porch and pushed his nose against the screen. Good evening, Miss Gook, he says. Rush, can I see you on a matter of the utmost importance? Well, Rush tossed his dish towel on the sink and says, I'm sure you'll excuse me, Mom. You went away and never come back. Exactly. I had to finish the dishes and clean the kitchen all by myself. That man is a sly operator. I'll sly operator him. When he comes back, remind me to thrash him within an inch of his life. The indignities we've suffered at that rest. Good evening. Head. Who's that? Sitting over on Elder's porch. Yeah, I see the guy, but who is he? Miss Elder's father. He's here on a visit from Dismal Seepage, Ohio. Well, why does he sit that way? His leg's hanging over the end of the porch swing. <laughs> That's the slightest notion. Well, seems to me... That... He's an eccentric fella. He was a teacher before he retired. I met him this afternoon. Very pleasant old gentleman. Mm-hmm. You know what Miss Elders calls him. Ralph? Instead of Papa or Dad or Father, she calls him Professor. Professor, can't I bring you a cushion to sit on? Professor, there's a plate of solid peanuts in on the buffet. And when she's talking about him, she refers to him as the Professor. Hmm? The Professor likes his eggs over easy at breakfast. The Professor can't stand to ride the train backwards. What's the idea? Oh, Miss Elders is so proud he's a teacher, I guess. Hmm? Well... I guess it is going to rain. Lightning way over there. Say, speaking of Miss Elders, calling her fat. Good evening. You spoke to him once. He attracted my attention. He waved. Mm. Boy, getting cooler every minute. Yeah. What did you start to say? When? Something about Miss Elders calling her father. Oh, Miss Elders calling her father professor reminds me of a silly new fad that's catching hold round town. What's that? Remember how irritated I got when Mr. Chin Bunny received that fancy Ph.D. college degree and Frida commenced referring to him as the doctor? Mm-hmm. Other ladies are starting the stunt. Referring to their husbands as the doctor? No, not the doctor. Their own titles. For instance, Miss Gulliver there on Mulberry Street begun to call Raymond the superintendent. He's superintendent there in the streetcar barns, you know. Uh-huh. And Miss Donahue mentioned the engineer today. Oh, yeah. I think that's silly, don't you? Yeah. Well, even Ruthie pulled off that. Good evening. What's eating him? He waved again? Yeah. Maybe he's waiting for you to speak. I don't know him. Well, speak anyway. Look how he's grinning and smirking. Go ahead and speak. Hey, evening. Wonder why he sits in the porch swing that funny way, legs dangling over the end. Seems to me a professor that way. Where do you teach? Country school. Do they call country school teachers professors? I guess so. Hmm. Oh, I was going to tell you about... Listen. Huh? Listen. Ah, that'll cool things off. Oh, the wind is... Wide open. Upstairs, pantry, hallway and all. And I better go close them? Oh, let's wait till the rain starts and then make a bash. I've always enjoyed doing that, ever since I was little. Mm-hmm. I figured out once why I enjoy waiting for the rain to start and then running to close the windows. Mm-hmm. When I was small, I used to be terrible scared of thunder and lightning. Probably because my mother was. It had come up a storm and she'd just get panic-stricken and cry and carry on right in front of Beth and I. Of course, that'd make us terrified, too. Well, the three of us would be trembling and apprehensive as a horse. Until the rain started... And that changed everything. Seemed like the rain took the curse off the thunder and lightning. Relieved us, don't you know? Instead of being miserable, we were all of a sudden happy. And we'd run to close the windows just laughing away. <laughs> Funny, huh? Uh, I remember one time... Yeah, it was a handy flash of lightning. Uh-huh. 
I like thunder and lightning now. One time when I was about 11 years old. Ah, that'll cool things off. Huh? What'd you start to say? Oh, one time when I was about 11 years old, oh, maybe younger, the family went to visit him. What's the matter with him? Maybe he's the original absent-minded professor. Maybe he forgets he's already spoken to it. I'm not going to pay any attention next time he beckons and smirks around. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, getting back to the ladies calling their husbands by their different titles. Ruthie had the nerve to do that downtown in Yamilton's today. Hmm? Imagine that. No. We bumped into Miss Hawker in underwear. She was talking about the telegrapher. Her man sends messages back and forth there in the CNA depot, you know. Uh-huh. Well, she was telling us what the telegrapher had said about something. Well, darned if that Ruthie didn't up and sing out a remark about the foreman. Ruthie, you scalloway. The foreman's had to put in considerable overtime lately, she said. <laughs> she was ashamed she'd said it the minute the words got out of her mouth. Stared at me so sheepish. <laughs> the foreman. <laughs> Frida Chin Bunny started all that. Miss <laughs> Montgomery there on East Walnut's kind of hard up for a title to call her husband. She refers to him as the cornetist. See, he don't work, and... She can't hardly call him the loafer, so she calls him the cornetist because he plays in the sewage disposal workers' band. Mm. How'd you refer to me? I didn't refer to you at all. I think that's a terrible, idiotic business. The doctor, the foreman, the telegrapher, the cornetist. Would you refer to me as the chief if you referred to me? No. I'm the chief accountant, am I not? Very likely. But you won't catch me referring to you as any chief. You could refer to me as the exalted Big Dipper. I bet that bet that'd make your women chums eyes Oh, I'd have a fine crack of thunder this time. Listen. Hey, hey. Oh, shoot. I expect it'd be louder than that. Such a bright flash of lightning. Then I better trot in and see about the windows? <laughs> no, let's wait till the rain starts and then dash. Mm-hmm. You think I'm silly, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Ruthie certainly felt silly today when she referred to Fred as the foreman. Glanced at me out of the corner of her eyes, so sheepish. I couldn't help smiling, kind of halfway malicious. Sometimes. Your pal across the street is making motions again. Oh, ish. Nodding and grinning to beat the band. Look the other way. I'd say offhand he was a lame brain. No, he talked very refined and elegant this afternoon. I anticipate a pleasurable sojourn in your fair city, he says. You don't catch lame brains feeling off trash like that. How long is he going to stay? A couple of weeks. I'm going to get a little tired of saying good evening if he plants himself out on the front porch every day. Is he still waving? More vigorously than ever before. You better salute him before he breaks his arm. <laughs> oh, yes. Good evening. Hmm. You satisfied his craving for sociability a minute anyway. He's quit gesturating and settled down to dangle. His elders just tell me. Oh, oh. Oh, now listen. It ought to be a Lulu. She rains all night. Nothing is so soothing and sleep-inducing as water pounding on the roof. Uh-huh. Wonder if our little child will get caught in the storm. Oh, that one can take care of himself. Mm. I'm sure you'll excuse me, Mom, says he, tossing his dish towel on the sink. Then he walks out the door and never come back. You the wicked boy. I'll say. Getting too big for his undershirt. One of these times I'm going to have... Hey! <gasps> that was a peach. We need action this time. Yeah. taste of the theme song there yeah it, it, am i crazy i could be i mean those names dr sleech is what uh, vic calls his wife that was the husband and wife by the way uh we're sort of uh, meeting all of the characters in pairs the main characters are uh, vic Sade and their young son rush who is referred to but um dr sleech i guess is just a pet name and, and bluetooth johnson the young guy's uh friend and, and towns like 
dismal seepage Ohio. And all these characters, like even the guy across the street, all the women that uh, Sadie referred to as her friends, never really appear on this show. They're only spoken about and referred to, which was another device of the show. I mean, the only other character in the classic era of the shows that you heard about was Sade's amiable kind of senile uncle fletcher which at some point i'm sure i will have to present to you i mean is this all it's such a slow down casual look into the past and is it too slow for modern times am i like just pushing something on people and and the, the the title that Vic has, he's in a lodge called the Sacred Stars of the Milky Way, which makes fun of these lodges and clubs that they still exist now, like the Odd Fellows and the Moose. But uh, back then, there were a lot of kind of kooky ones. And uh, he, of course, was the exalted Big Dipper of the Drowsy Venus chapter of the Sacred Stars of the Milky Way in his day. Um, yeah, just, I, if, if this is, I mean, you don't have to tell me you like it, but if I'm overdoing it, uh, just let me know, because I, I could do that. I could uh, do Vic and Sade uh, pretty often for a while. And, and as I said, our friend Jimbo really loved that. I mean, I could just stop talking and play a Jimbo and Vic and Sade and not say anything at all, which probably isn't what we're Oh, me and my uh, verbal fumblings, too. I'm trying to... Well, doing the monologue thing is probably useful if I focus, because, like, let's talk about Mike Booty for a second. Uh, He does a show on and off on the Overnight Scape Underground and on his own site called The Midnight Citizen. And he also likes this Gene Shepard-like night radio where you just talk and uh, have topics you discuss. And uh, he's been away at college, so to speak. He went back to university, and he did his first show in a long time the other day. And he he talked about William Blake and this project he had to do where he had to write poems based on William Blake poems, and, and just talking about his life and his ideas. And he has, he's able, and he has in the past, done these live shows, but like a live stream. And I'm not sure if I could just on the spot start up something. And I guess it requires a little bit of prep, but I don't know that I have that. I get myself caught up and I start doing the hobbit, the hobbit, the, and that, you know, Gene Shepard, while he did do that from time to time, that was not something he was uh, noted to do. And and Mike Booty, our midnight citizen on the overnight scape underground, really has a feel for this. And I don't think there's, well, I think even Gene Shepard did not get rich doing this, which is why he eventually gave it up. And even while he was doing it, he did a lot of uh, voiceovers and commercials and uh, appeared in some shows. He was in a couple of smaller Broadway shows, and that seemed to be what he really aspired to. And he also would do Uh, once a week for a long time, a live show in a nightclub in New York City called The Limelight. And he, he would get up. It wasn't like he sat behind his radio desk with a mic. And he really seemed to love working in front of an audience with his uh, shtick. And I'm not, I like the idea of it. I like the idea that I could do these live, you know, straight through instead of, you know, stopping. And I guess that's not really hard to do, but I would feel I should try it more often. And that's kind of what I'm doing in these shows is at least the talking segments that I'm doing, be prepared and talk to you just in that casual late night radio voice um, instead of like the sticky voice that I tend to fall into sometimes, me and my silliness. In any case, we are now approaching the end of another show, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate those who seem to be tuning in and listening, and uh, Anne, who 
the comments on the Facebook page, and uh, she sent me to a philosophy thing that at some point I'm going to have to talk about, because I am. I'm, I'm starting to learn about logic and philosophy, and maybe I like to imagine that if I learn more about logic and sentence structure and grammar, because I've been faking grammar. I just know what kind of sounds right to my ears. And if I really knew it, I imagine I could then lend that to what I'm doing here and think in a different, more organized fashion. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Right. But if you've got comments or anything, you can put them on the Facebook page or the Overnightscape Underground post, or you can send them directly to me at kpqr.torc at gmail.com. And all of those are very viable and acceptable ways of doing that. In the meantime, as I like to say, remember to set the controls for the heart of the fun.